you can see, the rust egg is gone. She's gone. She's out of here. Not before making a gigantic mess on my floor, but she's gone. Um, this is the engine, transmission, AC, power steering and such of the Rustang. We got the drive shaft, power steering pump. That's going to be of value to somebody, uh, just not necessarily me. So this is all on the marketplace, up for grabs. And just for kind of fun factor, I actually got this engine running a little better than I did in the bring home video with no carburetor on it. So we'll go ahead and insert that footage right now. not running perfect this thing the, the points definitely need replacing it uh, and obviously you know it's not gonna run perfect with a squirt bottle carburetor going on but we got it running the transmission had forward and reverse gears um, and like I said the car has gone to a new home some guy's gonna cut their roof off of it and save his high school sweetheart he had I believe a 72 uh, vinyl top Mustang in high school roof is all rusted out so ironically enough that's the only good part on that car was the roof. So that car gets to live on and you know, some form. It's not just going to the scrapyard. It's heart still here. It's for sale, it's up for grabs. If any of you guys happen to be on the Niles, Michigan area, Michigan area, we got the engine trans, all, this, all the, the accessories, power steering pump, drive shaft, and they even had the seats out of it. So if anybody in the local Niles, Michigan area is interested, come and grab that. Now, you're probably also looking over here, like, isn't that a new engine? And yes, it is a new engine. And you're probably like, also, isn't that a 302? And why do you need a 302 when you're selling a 302? Why do you have so many 302s? Well, this is not a 302. It's also not a 289. I don't know if a lot of you know this or not, but in the early years, uh, the Ford's passenger cars would have come with what I believe it 221, I think a 250, I could be wrong on that one, and a 260, and that's what this is. This is a 4.3 liter, 260 cubic inch Windsor V8. Um, it is, the early generations are kind of their own animal a little bit. Uh, we'll address that here in a minute. But what this is, is me trying to rebuild my high school sweetheart, my first project, my high school hot rod, and let's just get into what's going down. We're not building the project, this is just a piece of the puzzle, but this is kind of a neat engine, so let's just check it out. I guess first and foremost, guys, I wish I had some more pictures of it, but um, this is my high school hot rod. Just kind of a hodgepodge of parts head laying around. There's my 260. It had its original four speed behind it. I'll probably be a bit far-fetched to try and find one of those, but we'll see. Uh, and it was an 84 Ranger long bed. Um, it was rough around the edges. In fact, it kind of looked like something that like Sid, the crazy kid from Toy Story, would have built. They had a rattle can, a rattle can flames on the hood. It was in primer. Uh, I had a variation of like different spoked rims and white walls on it. Surprise. Um, just dual exhaust. I had a crane fireball ignition on it that eventually burned out and went back to points uh, which was a dog after that if I'm being honest I think my dad retarded the timing to pull some power out of it because uh, I was a stupid high school kid so you know potentially a good thing the thing was a dog after we went back to points but uh yeah that's it guys I got into a lot of trouble with this thing um I th I'm pretty sure it was this side this is pre-accident uh one night it was raining and I was being a stupid teenager and I kicked it sideways and I sideswiped a parked minivan on the opposite side of the road and completely smashed that bedside in. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, but I actually sold that truck and then like a year and a half later turned around and bought that truck back for more than I sold it. Eventually ended up blowing up that 260, bought a 302 to throw in it and that 302 turned out to be junk. Being a broke teenager, that was the end of my high school hot rod. It went to the scrapyard, got back out of it what we could. And I've since had three more Rangers, but I've always wanted to do this again. 
Now, there's a bunch of information on forums and blah, blah, blah. There's guys bickering back and forth uh, about what you can and can't do. There's guys that claim you can put the pistons, or not pistons, the rods and crank from this and the 302 and the 260 and have like, it's like 272 or 282. There's a big argument on that too. Uh, and it bumps it up to like 11 to 1 compression. There's also people who say you can't do that. Um, doesn't really matter to me because I don't have any intentions on necessarily hot rotting the hell out of this thing. This is going to be a relatively stock rebuild when I get to it. This engine does spin free. Let me get this in here. She spins decent. Um, the guy was very, very honest about everything. Um, he has even marked it's right is it this side? I think it's the other side. This thing dropped a valve. He even gave me the valve in a baggie. Right here. So you know, it's gonna need pistons. I'm hoping to not have to overbore it any more than like ten. I honestly don't know if they will take any more than ten. Hopefully, if I have to. But um guys, I'm not I don't have any intentions of going crazy with it. I guess one of the unique factors on these are the aluminum water pumps. They also have a different balancer. They have a five bolt aluminum bell housing. The I believe the first year or two of the 289s also did. Uh, but then the 289, the late model 289s and 302s switched to a six bolt. So there's this one two, three, four, five bolts on these 260s, which can throw a damper on your transmission options. Um, you can either go with a $900 quick time adapter, which I have zero intentions of doing, or these bell housings are actually uh, less shallow, I guess, as a way if you were to lay it down face down shorter than the other ones for like 250 bucks. There's a company that makes an adapter that bolts to these, so you can run T5s. That will likely be the option that I go. I had also tossed around the idea of C4. I'm not 100% sure if I want to go stick or auto, nor have I looked up auto conversion options, because that's obviously a manual transmission bell housing. Let me know in the comments if you have any information on that, because I genuinely don't know. But it's a super complete engine. It even came with a... Like an NOS heat shield I'm not going to use. Some gaskets. Just some oddball gaskets. Donut gaskets aren't going to get reused. Um, fun fact, this thing was actually in a Willys Jeep. Um, and it kind of looks like this guy cut off this exhaust flange and like booger welded or JB welded it back on so that it fit in the Willys. He had unfortunately... Hack the shit out of the willies too to make it fit. But yeah, this thing was actually bolted up to the willies uh, factory transfer case and everything. And apparently it was a lot of fun to drive until that valve happened. But um, I'm trying to think of anything else oddball specific to the 260. I think I think there's a difference in the motor mount flanges. Can we go? Oh, uh, nope. Manifold's in the way. What about this side? like the same distance I thought I saw on a forum that there was a difference in either these widths or a difference in offset from front to back again I can't confirm that it's just another oddball difference but other than that I mean these are pretty much just 289 302s they just got a uh, less bore less stroke and um I think these peaked at like 194 horsepower or something back in the day. And if I'm being honest, my plan with this thing is going to be whatever the machine shop tells me. I'm hoping I only have to go like 10 over, 10 under. Hopefully the cylinder walls are good. We'll probably pull these heads off and stuff here in a minute. Why is my camera blurry? What if we zoom back out? Okay, we'll zoom back out. So I'm hoping I only go 10 over, 10 under, and everything's all good to go. Uh, I'm probably gonna run, you know, nice rings and bearings in it. Uh, I have intentions on just reusing these heads. These have like 
really tiny combustion chamber so they made they made good compression i think they're like 52 cc again don't quote me but they're actually tight enough that you can't run super big valves in it um, if i can get away with it i might have some slightly larger ones cut into it maybe not again we're not going crazy um, factory style pistons factory rod crank nice bearings because the exhaust ports are so small and I don't know if I'm going to get anything out of them or not these actually look I was thinking of gasket matching but these actually look like they are the same size as the ports so I might not get to do that that was going to be like the only thing I wanted to do to this was basically gasket match uh, the exhaust and intake ports I think I even want to run the factory intake manifold and I was going to gasket match that too. Um, now while I do have the original carb, you know my high school one just had its original two barrel carburetor on it and it was plenty enough. And again I'm not trying to race this thing, I'm just something neat to cruise around town in. Um, my cousin has a Holley 500 CFM two barrel carb and I want to slap on this. So I don't have any intentions of going crazy with it. I just I was bound and determined to have this 260. Uh, I didn't want a 289, didn't want a 302. I wanted a damn 260. So what I had in high school, I'm very aware that if anybody is still listening to me ramble, but I mean, you can make more power with a 289 and 302. Put a stroker in it. Take a big step back and literally fuck your own face. Hey, I'm not fucking made of money. I have $100 in this engine. And I'm hoping to have this engine completely rebuilt for like maybe a thousand dollars. You know, you're gonna have. Yeah, I could make power with a 302, but again, it's not just just trying to cruise and have old school glass pack sounds and small cubic engine. Not trying to race. I'm not trying to impress nobody. I'm not trying to be just like everyone else and Coyote and LS swap everything. And yeah, I, I could have done 302. Whatever. Who cares? Who cares? I got my 260. It's what I wanted. It's what I got. It's what I'm going with. I'm probably even going to keep the points on here. Maybe. But, um, I guess enough rambling. I do believe the guy that I bought this from claimed that he had these heads off. So I'm kind of hoping with the quickness I can just go ahead and brrr, blow the top end off. See what that piston looks like. See what the piston walls look like. And... Kind of go from there. Um, again, this isn't anything that I'm diving into because, you know, Sandy and Lucy are still tore apart. Lucy's tore apart. Sandy is just being abused on the daily. hoping to do a round two on Sandy this winter. I don't know if I'll make it or not because uh, next time she comes apart I am kind of going ham on her. I want a Crown Vic four link. I've got her other engine that should make much much more power. If the machine shop ever get my fucking heads back to me. It's been 13 weeks now. 13. 13! Thrilling! 13! Um, but yeah this is a this is for sure a future project. This is not going anywhere. It's gonna get tucked into the corner until I can find myself a clean first gen 83, 84 single cab short bed two wheel drive Ranger. Um, future project pieces. I have to figure out which transmission I wanna run, get the truck, get this thing rebuilt, and we're just gonna go ham, man. We're gonna keep it super simple like we always do, but enough rambling. I suppose let's get some of this tour apart and pray to God that we don't find like really thin bores or too much damage. First and foremost, let's give it a chance to come out without fighting me. WD is all I got. I'm not fancy like pudding. It's just the WD. I don't have no skeet juice. So just the old school WD. 
You're gonna have to do it. Again, the guy said that he had uh, had this apart to find that valve, which I had in a baggie somewhere. So I don't know where that ended up at, but. Maybe. There we go. There she's wiggle warming. Give me. Where's she coming? There she goes. You see those little things in there? Oh damn, that's just a little bit of aluminum corrosion. Nothing crazy. So there's that. Yeah. Next up, I guess we'll get these valve covers off of here. And these things are rusty and clearly junk. I'm not going to be that much of a cheap ass. I have. I actually have a set of marine valve covers and a set of 302 valve covers. So, at the very least, as you can see, these are they're a little too corroded. Too long ago. It's probably gonna weigh a thousand pounds, but I don't think it's gonna fight me. Come on. Come on off. Easy peasy. Well, there's just some debris in here. Nothing crazy. I don't see anything I'm worried about yet. I'm just worried about, like I said, the cylinder walls and what that one piston looks like that had the valve snap off in it. So, next we'll yank these heads off. Might have to, I'm gonna have to at least drop the alternator. I think that's it. So while I was out in the truck, I found the broken valve. It's actually small enough, I can't tell if it's an intake or an exhaust. Like I said, these things have itty bitty little combustion chambers, which I'll show you when I get these heads off, but uh, they're pretty small. Um, which, you know, allowed for higher compression, which allowed for horsepower. Um, just for comparison, this is a 64, 64 and a half, 260 cubic inch engine was rated at 194 horse, the 302 and Sandy, so 46 extra cubes, and 78 was only rated at 135 horsepower. So 60 horsepower difference, 64 cubic inch difference. This thing made significantly more power than that. It's two barrel, same platform, so there is that. So I can at least have myself a 200 horsepower engine. I don't expect any of these head bolts to be tight. Come out. Put that off for me. Yep. 
Steve Allen push rods. Uh, we got a bad lifter. And there's those little itty bitty combustion chambers I was telling you about. We will uh, we'll get a better look at those here in a minute. Totally a broken lifter. Can you see that? Lifter pieces. These look like newer head gaskets. I wonder if this guy thought he was just gonna gasket this thing and and get to drive it. Oh, we're gonna be plenty good. I don't have any concerns here. I think we're gonna get away with 10 over. If I really wanted to be a douchebag about it, I could probably just get one of those stones and re-dingle ball it, but I'd rather not take the effort to rebuild an entire engine than be wrong. This guy, you gonna come right off for me? I miss one? I did, I missed one. There she goes. So there is our culprit. Chamber is a little on the grody side. Hopefully, hopefully we can get that valve to come out. Uh, again, I'm not in a hurry to build this necessarily anytime soon. So we'll just, as we walk by, we'll just skeet on that. Maybe we'll do the, the transmission, um, it's not paint thinner, transmission fluid and what's that? I forget what that other mix is, but it's what I use to knock apart the flathead. So we'll try and get that out. If not, the machine shop should be able to do it. But look at look at how tight these chambers are. So you can really see that like you can't you can't really go bigger on these valves. I mean, I'll probably come through and maybe like deshroud these a little bit. The the minute amount of compression we'll lose will be compensated by the amount of flow that we should get. And you see we got I mean, we can come basically all the way out to there if we wanted to. But uh, yeah, other side looks good. And even on that piston, walk all the way around here. It looks like it smacked flat. You see that like perfect circle right there? Oh, well, there's there's some piston damage. Oh yeah, she got dinged around. No big deal. I said I I knew that was there. And if that's all the damage we have in this entire thing, I'm really not that concerned about it. I said if I'll take it to the machine shop and if they think they can just take stones to it and address these walls a little bit, we might not even bore it over. I mean, we'll probably have to. We're probably going to have to at least take a 10 over. I would prefer to not have to buy all new pistons, but most likely the boat that we're going to be in. A little bit of flashlight action here. So you can see there's there's some corrosion up here a little bit, but I mean, it's the piston doesn't come up that high. So I mean, I guess it doesn't really technically matter. We could just clean that up. We'd probably be okay. I'm not full blown tearing this thing apart today. I just wanted to to get to this point. And see where we stood. It looks like this piston took a blow too. Show did. Show did. That one took a blow. I wonder if they had let this thing sit for a while and tried to fire it up. And just those those valves were locked, locked in place. That's what I'm gonna bet happened. I don't see any damage over here. It's cool. Cool, we know where we stand. I mean, obviously we could run into potentially more issues down there in the bottom end, but I'm out of engine stands at the moment. I don't see, surprisingly, I don't see any bent push rods, considering we have broken a broken valve and a bad lifter, which is not even on the bad piston. So that's kind of weird. But everything, for the most part, is wiggle-worthy. 
I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be okay. I'm going to basically half-ass bolt this thing back together and either leave it on that pallet, roll it off into a corner, or maybe I'll require another engine stand. I know you see one right there, but that's not mine. But, uh, yeah, this is basically just... I wanted to make sure that I didn't have my hopes up in that. Okay, I thought I saw a deep gouge or something. Yeah, we're going to have... We're gonna have a machine shop trip. Not not a big deal. God, that, that I feel like that leaves. I think you come all the way up though. I'm gonna say I feel like that leaves a lot of stroke you could add to this thing, but not so much. Not so much. But um Yep guys, I'm gonna tuck this thing off into the corner after I half ass bolt it back together. And uh you'll see it probably slowly piece by piece over the next year or so. Getting put back together in mostly stock form. I, I, mean, I do want to put, you know, some sort of at least choppy cam. I don't know that it'll, I don't know. We'll see. I want it more choppy than that. I want it more choppy than Sandy's. I like Sandy's, but I definitely, these small cubic inch engines with the choppy cam just sound super dope. But, um, so where you stand, guys? Enough rambling, enough mumble jumble. I need to dramatically clean up my shop, which I feel like I spend more time doing than anything anymore. And uh, so I'm gonna bolt it back together so I don't lose all this shit. And we'll see it again. So as always, thanks for tuning in. I much appreciate you guys. I'll try and get like another round of stickers out sometime soon. It's just been crazy busy. And I haven't made the shirts happen yet. I'm really sorry, but um, I gotta clean up this mess. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe next time we'll actually build something instead of tearing it apart. Or work on Sandy. or I don't know. I don't know. We'll do something.